Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Le Boisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain. I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. So what he had done is get the oxygen to stick to the inside of a red-hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making rust, which is oxygen and iron, but he was making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. No mass had been lost. It had merely been transformed. And now he wanted to transform it all back into water. This is only the beginning. In the next few months, I hope to demonstrate that I can recombine this combustible air with vital air and transform them both back into water. I will recreate exactly the same amount of water that was lost here in this process. It is my hope to complete the cycle, water into gas, into water. And not a drop lost. For a long time, Lavoisier had suspected that the exact amount of matter, the mass, involved in any transformation was always conserved. But to prove this, he had to perform thousands of experiments, and he had to do the measurements with incredible accuracy. That's where his great wealth from being a tax collector came in. He could afford to commission the most sensitive instruments ever built. He became obsessed with accuracy. But Lavoisier's exacting methods were also starting to anger the growing mob of hungry, disenchanted Parisians. Antoine! Antoine! Oh, wake up, Antoine! I'm sorry. What time is it? It is almost time to receive Monsieur Marat. The Academy asks you to assess his designs. He claims to have made a great discovery. Oh, Antoine, have you forgotten? Oh, God. There was another charlatan with an idea to peddle. God give me patience. <laughs> uh, Monsieur Marat. Uh, Monsieur. I have invented a device which projects an image of the substance of fire onto a screen. You see? Mm. When a lantern is shone through a flame, we see a shimmering pattern above the flame. My device renders the substance of fire visible. Have you collected it, the substance of fire? Have you, have you trapped it and measured it? Well, no, but, but one can see it. I'm sorry, in the absence of exact measurements, of, of precise observations, without rigorous reasoning, one can only be engaging in conjecture, so this is not science. I am not given to conjecture, monsieur. Really? No. no. If you will excuse me, I, I am extremely busy today, but thank you. Thank you. So that is all? Then good day, monsieur! Let me guess, Mara. The king's scientific despot has decreed that your invention does not conform to the version of the truth as laid down by the Academy. Lavoisier. He talks about facts. He worships the truth. Listen to me, my friend. They are all the same, the Royal Academies. They insult the liberty of the mind. They think... They are the sole arbiters of genius. They are rotten to the core, just like every other tentacle of the king. The people, it is they who will determine right and wrong. Don't worry. In my next pamphlet, 
I will expose this persecutor of yours. For years, the Lavoisiers had burned, chopped, melted and boiled every conceivable substance. They'd shown that as long as one is scrupulous about collecting all the vapors, liquids and powders created in a transformation, then mass is not lost. Liquids might become gases, metals may rust, wood may become ash and smoke, but matter, the tiny atoms that make up all substances, none of it is ever lost. The crowning glory of this opus was their remarkable use of static electricity to cause oxygen and hydrogen to recombine back into water. As the French Revolution exploded, the royal family and whole swathes of aristocrats lost their heads on the guillotine. To the French revolutionaries of 1790, Lavoisier meant one thing and one thing only. He was the despised tax collector who built that wall around Paris. Lavoisier's job as a tax collector brought him under suspicion. He was denounced by a failed scientist turned radical journalist, Jean-Paul Marat. Where is Lavoisier? I don't know. Lavoisier! Lavoisier! What Lavoisier did is absolutely central to science and especially to equals mc squared. Because what he said is if you take a bunch of matter, you can break it apart, you can recombine it, you can do anything to it, and the stuff of the matter won't go away. If the mob burned Paris to the ground, utterly raised it, shattered the bricks into the rubble and dust, and burned the buildings into ashes and smoke, turns out if you put a huge dome over Paris and weighed all the smoke and all the ashes and all the rubble, it would add up to the exact same weight as the original city in the air around it before. Nothing disappears. By the time Einstein enrolled as a physics student, the first two parts of the equation, E and M, energy and mass, were in place. They were revered as the two great domains of nature. Everything that existed fell into one of these classifications. The laws that governed one did not apply to the other. But of course, young Albert didn't care much for laws. If you call it soon. Good grief, Einstein. What happened to you? It is more than a little ironic, having been reprimanded yesterday by that idiot Professor Pernay for poor attendance, that I should in fact attend a practical lesson, which 